I just have her uh, email. I don't have anything new. Um, I just checked in case there were, if, sometimes I get emailed if there are connection issues. I don't have anything from either of them either. Okay. Let me look at that. Let me get the phone number real quick. So I can give that to her too. Freddie, with the phone number, she'll also need the passcode. Okay. Which is the six digit, um, I think it's 485866. That's right. I emailed all that to her about 20 minutes ago. Oh, okay. I can. Let's see. Oh, here she says, I don't have Zoom, so I'll be attending on the phone. She said that at 619. So she must yeah. be, she is planning on calling. Yeah, so she, I got that as well. And I sent her the phone information. Um, sure, part is here. Here's here's so we could start. And oh, here's somebody here's on the girl. phone. Great. Hi, Sharvery, how are you? Thank you. You're on mute. Hello. I, I was waiting Hi, to Carol. rename myself. Carol? Yep. Great. Thank you so I'm very here. much. Perfect. Okay. So we have a quorum. Uh, okay. Um, do we need to do more than uh, just Casey, do I'll, I'll do the roll call really quickly if you don't mind. Um, All right. Chair, All right. Yep. Chair Wheeler. Here. Hello. Vice Chair G. Yeah. Commissioner Crane is absent. Commissioner Dixit. Present. Commissioner Carter. Here. And Commissioner Bedard. Here. We have a quorum of five commissioners. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, can we do the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Yes, I will put that up right now. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, I want to ask if uh, at this time, anyone in the public has public comments on items that are not on the agenda. Are you interested in taking the $750 lamp? I'm sorry, Hello? Hello? Uh, hello? Hello. Does, um, I'm asking for members of the public if they have a, a comment on items not on the agenda. I do not see any hands raised and I wasn't able to determine who was talking just then. Okay. I thought we had a $750 donation to the library perhaps. <laughs> But apparently not. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so um, we have items for consideration. The uh, first item are, is the uh, minutes of the regular meeting of July 7th, 2022. 
Does anyone have any changes or edits for the minutes? Uh, uh, someone make a motion? To uh, I move that we approve the minutes. Second. Thank you. Thank you. So roll call, please. Yes, Chair Wheeler. Yes. Uh, Vice Chair G. Yes. Commissioner Dixit. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Crane. Who's not the president. Uh, I, she's down at the bottom. I'm just trying to unmute her. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Carter. Yes. Okay, and Commissioner Bedard. Aye. Okay, that passes unanimously. Next item for consideration is the uh, parking proposal by the city. And Manny, thank you so very much for joining us. And uh, would you like to please take uh, present the proposal? Sure, um, if you can all hear me. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so thank you for having me, um, commissioners and, and chair, vice chair. So um, what I wanna do is just kind of go over what's happening right now and how we got to where we are and looking for um, timed parking in front of the library. The report that was included in the packet also came with uh, some crude uh, Google photos of, of the site, uh, but I think it, it uh, gave the idea of the spaces we're looking at. So uh, the city started looking uh, into timed parking and how that would be uh, how that would be taken care of out in front of the main library there in, in Los Altos, and uh, and a few things uh, came to. Uh, consideration uh, between maintenance, which at the time I was the main, um, and uh, and police department. So because when we're talking about time parking, we're talking about the reality is it needs to be enforced as well. Um, so in that uh, discussion with the with the previous chief, actually, uh, the, uh, a few of the, the bullet points that were on the report is really what I want to focus on. We, we talked about length of time for the parking, location of the parking spaces, number of the time parking spaces, as well as installation of the signs, which would be a maintenance thing, and the PD's ability to enforce. So taking all those things into consideration, this is where we are. Um, we are uh, currently uh, starting the process to install these poles that will put the signs up in the 14 spaces. So that was the selection um, of, uh, of two hour parking out in front of the main entrance to the main library. Um, so that covers a couple of those bullet points. Uh, the installation of the signs we chose right directly across, as you would see in those uh, those Google photos that I gave you uh, in the packet. Um, they're right across, we chose them. And part of the reason there's 14 spaces is because there's 14 spaces between the edge of the, uh, of the parking lot where it starts at San Antonio and it goes all the way to the entrance of that small parking uh, area uh, across from the library. So those 14 spaces are the ones that would be uh, timed parking. So they're they're available um, for any anyone to park a two hour limit. And that's the, the as far as length of time, that's something that the police took into consideration as far as consistency goes. Downtown on the streets, it's the same thing. It'll be two hour parking. And with that, it would not only be the two hour timed parking, but the timed parking is within a certain uh, I was eight to six I'm sorry I, I should know this offhand I think I put that in the report did I yes. uh, nine to six it was nine to six okay so nine to six uh instead of the downtown street parking um and that would give uh the uh, the officers the ability to enforce it consistently across the across the board and it's just right down the street anyway so that's how we came to what we're doing um so we're installing the poles i think we're uh, expecting the signs to to, to uh, inform the library uh, commission that your request that was after the april 7th meeting uh we followed through with it and it's it's really a good idea with all the activity that i hope you know, there'll be even more activity around that uh, around that area and that parking lot activity that's going to be ramping up um, now. Uh, hopefully, that'll help the patrons that with their events and stuff like that. And and I have discussed this with the uh, with the library staff with Bryant, um, and uh, and I, I think this is this is where we are with this is a pretty good plan. So, if you have any questions, I'm here. Wonderful. Thank you so very much. Sure. Any questions, commissioners. 
Freddie, your volume is really tough to hear, at least on my end. Oh, okay. my too. Is this better? Is, is that better? Slightly. A little bit, yeah. Just a little bit. At least the scratching noise has stopped. Um, I think the scratching noise is my papers. Is this better? Okay. Not so, much. Okay. Uh, if I may, I mean, Chair Wheeler, if I may, I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, for Manny, thank you very much for this proposal. It's measured and seems to address the problem. And you worked with the staff, and I'm sure you read Commissioner G's report on uh, extent, uh, parking uh, downtown or least in the civic center that we worked on thank you yes thank you so much we're very very pleased that uh we have some action on the parking pro uh proposal it's really wonderful especially with the dog park uh that's going to take up some spaces uh right in front of the library your timing couldn't be better so we really do appreciate it thank you <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you so very much. We really appreciate you attending our meeting and uh, sharing about sure. the proposal. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, let's see. The next item for uh, consideration, the Public Arts Commission Uh, and um, I'm I'm not sure exactly what was discussed at last month's meeting, but the Public Arts Commission had been asked to consider a mural at the Woodland Branch. Um, they they took a very good look at the Woodland Branch, and their conclusion was that. It might be a better use of um, time and resources to think about putting a uh, kind of a picnic area in the in the part of the of the lot that's just kind of this big vacant lot to the side, uh, the lot that you know we've had our eye on for if we if we were ever able to expand the Woodland Library that would be the spot. Um, I have spoken with the library, uh, with the uh, public arts uh, chair, and I have, I attended their meeting last week, and they're interested in, in it, but really not their purview to do a picnic area. That's not really what the public arts commission does. And so it's something that maybe, you know, I'm, I'm bringing it up because we might want to think about what would like to, we should talk to Grant and uh, Rose when she's back and of course Jennifer to see if if that makes sense. And uh, and if people, if everybody that it made sense, uh, perhaps it's something that could be explored uh, and by the library commission. And so I just wanted to put it out for discussion. Uh, does anybody have any comments uh, about this? I, I think I made a comment in the subcommittee meeting that I would reiterate. And that is uh, what we really think that Woodland needs is to be expanded. And we wouldn't want to put anything on the wall or on the ground that would uh, be uh, a cause of delaying a possible expansion. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Thoughts about this? Is it something that uh, you want to, you know, talk about discuss uh, Pierre. Well, I, if you know, the staff has to be agreeable to it. I mean, Bryant and uh, the 
county have to be agreeable to how we'd set it up. I think whatever was done would have to be temporary. Uh, and, you know, it is possible to put in benches and reading areas that complement the library. But again, I, you know, I would hope and I would expect that uh, the staff, uh, you know, that they would do what the county or staff think is the right thing to do and everyone would work hand in hand to for the best solution on that one. Mm -hmm. And I think the idea was to make it very temporary and not, and, and not uh, from, this is what I understood the project might look like. It would be just kind of clearing some of that in the weeds back there and just maybe putting down sand or some pea gravel or something and then putting the the art commission did say that perhaps they could put some benches with art you know and have an art project where people an adult contest and one uh, kids contest on painting the benches um there's also the patio in the back that also i mean without doing anything on the side the the Public Arts Commission, and this is something we could discuss with them, might want to put some benches back there because the kids play out there. No, I shouldn't say play. The kids are out there. And if they had benches, more benches, there's a picnic table, and I believe there's one bench. But if there were if there were room for and a need for other benches to make it um you know a place where where the kids could go and read out there or study. Uh, it might make it, you know, the patio a little more pleasant place to uh, to hang out and to work and or, or read. Um, and that's something that the Public Arts Commission might actually be uh, up for. Bryant? Yeah, I just want to... Oh, that, that would be... Bryant? Uh, yeah, I just want to jump in um, and just kind of give my two cents on it as well, having worked at Woodland. Uh, my understanding of it, of course, is the outside area is um, under the jurisdiction of the city. Um, so ultimately, you know, we can also pass ideas and proposals, but it does come down to whether the city, uh, you know, uh, thinks it's a good idea or not. Uh, my experience working on the back area is that, yeah, the kids do go out there uh, to use it, especially during the after school hours when they're kind of waiting for their parents to come pick them up, things like that when they're hanging out, especially when they get a little bit noisy. We do encourage them to take the, the more rambunctious kids to uh, enjoy the sunlight outside and perhaps clearing that area would be me having a heart attack because I see them out there out in the brush and jumping on the construction like no no don't do that oh. so but again ultimately I think it comes down to the city like when you know I asked them hey could you move some of the lumber away that that was outside you know my jurisdiction other than to reach out and ask them hey I'm, I'm noticing a problem could you help us solve it so uh, would have been uh, we, we missed Manny but Manny would have been able to give us the comment on how that would be handled Okay, so uh, having that area cleared or maybe some of it cleared and just maybe having a little more room for the kids to sit out there on benches or a picnic table and study might be something that would be useful for, for Woodland. Okay. And I, ha I have seen folks back there in the morning too before we're open, you know, either just sitting or just walking their dogs through. So it's not like it's an area that no one ever uses. So, you know, making it safer wouldn't be a terrible idea in my opinion. <laughs> okay. Okay. Any other comments from any of the other commissioners? Well, the, uh, my other comment is that uh, if they are interested in cleaning up the back patio, so uh, that would be a good thing because the back patio really needs to be cleaned up. Okay. And additional uh, seating would be a nice idea in the back. Okay. Uh, well, um, maybe the infrastructure subcommittee can just take a look at, at, at it and come up with a proposal for the, for the commission to uh, review and, and take a look at, and then we could also discuss with the city staff, maybe with Manny, um, and, and see what he thinks. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next 
item for consideration is the is a collaboration with the Public Arts Commission on uh, their proposal for the city of Los Altos to have a poet laureate. Um, this was something that the chair of the Public Arts Commission brought to my attention and wondered if we would be interested in collaborating. And it seems like a natural for the Library Commission to collaborate with Public Arts on this project. And um, uh, to, to make, to just be clear, this is a project that would need to be approved by the, the council. Uh, but I think we could lend support in developing the project. We could help, uh, you know, perhaps in um, judging the applicants for uh, Poet Laureate and, you know, other tasks that would um, contribute to this work. So I wanted to put this in front of you to see what your comments are. Um, commissioners, do you have uh, ideas, comments about, about this collaboration? Was there something in the town crier about this? I don't remember seeing anything. Charvery, you had- I, I, Somewhere I read about this. Okay. Well, maybe if you can locate that, you can bring it to our attention. Uh, Charvery, did you have your hand up? Yes, I did. I had a question about this. I uh, don't understand exactly what it means. Is this somebody who applies from the town and uh, has a body of work that they've submitted before or is known for? And then how long do they stay a poet laureate for? Is it for a certain number of months or a year or? Um, can you give me some background? Um, well, when I attended the Public Arts Commission meeting, they were discussing the, the proposal and uh, here's what they are considering. This is not, you know, written in stone, but this is what they're considering. They're considering that should be someone who is published, that it should be someone who either lives or works in Los Altos or has a close connection to Los Altos. Um, and, and that close connection is undefined. Um, that it would be a one or two year term um, and that their role would be that of, similar to Poet, Poet Laureate in other cities of, uh, participating in events, uh, going to schools, uh, and just generally um, promoting poetry to the entire community. So that- I think it would be lovely. Yeah, I think it would be a very nice thing and uh, nice for us to participate in. Okay, so other commissioners, your thoughts about that? I this? agree. Is Okay. Is this an honorary position? Right. I think they're considering a, a very small um, honorarium. Uh, okay. But just very small. Okay. Yeah. So it's basically an honorary. So I couldn't disagree more with doing this. I think that uh, it's political, invariably unless you make it as clean as you possibly can make it. It's gonna go one way or the other. It's not gonna go in the middle. And I, you know, deeming, I know the county has a lot of experience with poet. They had a poet laureate um, and they have a lot of experience with it. I just think it's a very dangerous ground unless the rules are absolutely clean and um, the panel should not be anybody from any of the commissions. The panel should be, you know, we're close enough to Stanford and Santa Clara to recruit the best. We do this yearly. We make it a contest. I mean, there's a lot we can do with this, but we have to be very careful just from what I've seen. And uh, I would not just support uh, a poet laureate being named for a one-year basis based on someone's opinion of their connection to Los Altos, be it in the hills or be it in an incorporated area. That's just my, uh, so I, I hate to be 
negative about this, especially because my background is arts. And but there falls to this. And if we go into it, we need to be very wary. Um, it, it's and you know, and I'm sure the the Public Arts Commission has not heard any of this. Uh, I certainly haven't attended, you know, this is the first I heard last session that they were even considering this. And, you know, I don't get the town crier. So there you go. I didn't see it anywhere. So, uh, but I thought about it a lot and I really believe it. It's just very, very, it can be done, but it's got to be done right. Uh, that's really my, my biggest concern about this. It could get real political. Well, actually, I'm glad you said that. Well, Pierre is bringing up something that I hadn't thought of. I had thought of that really here. Sharp. I Hello? agree. I agree because I had also not considered this. Uh, Carol, and what you're saying is right, but I just assumed that, you know, like we would lend support to the fact that poetry is being encouraged, uh, everyone learning all the different languages right. and literature, poetry would also be part of that. That's the angle that I was thinking about. And so whoever would judge I know. Uh, would have the right background of literature to understand. We don't necessarily have that background. Right. I'm glad well, that you mentioned all of this, Pierre, because of I hadn't thought of that at all. I, I thought like Shavari did, that it would be a very uh, kind of elegant thing. Um, would you be, okay, so assuming that the Public Arts Commission uh, can put guidelines and regulations and guardrails around this to satisfy um, I mean, I, and I think it would be important perhaps to, uh, um, I mean, I will definitely mention your concerns to the chair of the Public Arts Commission and see what, you know, if, whether they have considered that and if they have, what, what their plan is to avoid making this a political uh, problem. Um, I hate to put you on the spot, Jennifer, but have could you enlighten Not us? Not the spot, Commissioner. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Would you, um, could you enlighten us about any? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I, you know, I appreciate everyone's perspective. Um, you know, Commissioner Bedard, you're you're very well versed in you know in the arts and understand that it it, it isn't just a neutral territory. Um, I would what I would encourage is um, the first off we have a county poet laureate and they work with the Poetry Center of San Jose. So there's lots of resource out there for that. Um, to have poetry events, if it was something they wanted to dip their toes into of inviting, you know, having those kinds of events to encourage poetry in the community. Additionally, both the County Poet Laureate and Cupertino, the city of Cupertino has their own Poet Laureate with a very extensive guidebook. So I would encourage them to take a look. I'd be happy to send on that, um, you know, to someone if you'd like to connect us. Uh, as, as again, Commissioner Batard said, there's a lot of um, detailed work as to selection, stipend, um, social media, different kinds of allowances, what kind of events, and so it is a roadmap for that um, before you kind of delve right in. But again, the library is always happy to support the, the arts and poetry. And with our County Poet Laureate, we will continue to have events there too. So just so we know we, we have opportunity as well. Does that help? That helps a lot, Jennifer. I appreciate it very much. And I will the chair of the Public Arts Commission, then email you and her and connect you. And she, I, I know she'll be very appreciative of uh, your help and guidance on this. So thank you. Okay, um, well, is it interest, but 
only if it is very well um, thought out and um, uh, you know, we could be assured that it will not become a nightmare. Shavari? <laughs> Can we say something like, uh, as the Library Commission, we are interested in supporting the activity, but that the selection process should be very clear and uh, not politically motivated? We can certainly consider something like that of that nature, Pierre. I would just say at this point to bring us the guidelines and, you know, take into consideration what the county's doing. It's great that Cupertino's got guidelines set up and that can be, you know, given over. It makes things a lot easier and the bounds are known. So it's, you know, that makes it if we go there, obviously we support it. But I just brought up that it's not all positive. OK, so how that, that's all. I didn't mean to be a downer on it, but. How about this as a response to the Public Arts Commission? We are we are very interested in supporting it, and we would uh, encourage you to uh, take a look at the guidelines that Cupertino has established, and we will uh, we look forward to to uh, hearing more about the program from you. So you know, for our consideration, does that work? Yes. I would just put strongly before encourage. That was it. <laughs> okay. Does that work for you, Nelvin? Yeah, I'm just I'm still kind of wondering what our role is relative to the uh, Public Arts Commission. It sounds like they're taking the lead on that and we would support. Uh, I'm, I'm not so certain whether uh, there's any uh, active role on our part other than saying that uh, we'll, we'll We'll accept their recommendations and and perhaps coordinate. But uh, I'm just trying to understand what value we bring to the table as a commission. That is certainly something that could we could figure out as they develop the program. So, for example, their suggestion was that we could be members of the commission could uh, help select. The, the poet laureate, but if that is a no no, if that doesn't make any sense, then 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 that would that would rule that out, and we'd have to talk. We'd have to see what else would they want us to do to participate, and if these guidelines essentially rule out any participation by the library commission, then that would become clear, and we could say. You know, this is very interesting and we are certainly supportive of it, but it doesn't appear that we have a role to play. But we could still, re I mean, at this point, since we know nothing, we could remain open to hearing from them. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, I'll respond to her in that in, in that manner, and then we'll see where, where it goes. And Jennifer, thank you so very much. I will send an email and connect you with Monica. Okay, super. Thank you. Thank you for summarizing that, Freddie. My, um, I was just going to ask if you were going to respond. So thank you for clearing that up. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. Okay, the next item for consideration is a proposal by the infrastructure committee of, for a sound mitigation wall at the Woodland Library. Either Casey or Mary Jo, would you mind showing that um, slide deck? I can do it. Uh, one second. I'm getting a weird pop up here. Hmm. Um, okay. I I have the um one second. 
let me scroll down. I have, I don't have the um, PowerPoint, but I have it in the packet here. So okay. you can scroll through. Okay. Can so this, see that? yes, thank you so right. much. So if we can just go down to the next slide or um, page. Mm -hmm. Hard for me to get it exactly there. Okay, so this is, um, again, this is a, a different solution to the same problem that we've talked about at Woodland Branch for um, three, three years now. <laughs> um, <and laughs> as, as you know, the Woodland Branch is one open space and, in, and conceptually it is really divided into two spaces or sections. One is the adult section, one is the children's area. There, however, there are no internal walls that physically separate those two sections. And so the noise is uh, a, quite a problem and adults do not have an area where they can work and read in relative quiet. And school children, they study alone or in groups and they are tutored and they make up a large portion of the library patrons during the weekday on the, in the afternoon and on the weekends. And uh, uh, the son of one of our commissioners, Carol Carter, has been very gracious in coming and helping us look for solutions to this problem. And he, in one of his tours of the Woodland Branch said, you know, a wall to mitigate the sound could be built. And he came up with this suggestion. Um, could you go to the next slide, please, or, or page, please? So the key findings were that really only one glass wall with one or two doors would be necessary to create an quiet adult space. He uh, costed this for us. He estimated all the cost and he said it, the cost, including the installation and the materials would be about $700 per running linear foot or about $40,000 to build this wall and to have one door or two doors installed in it. The panels could be held together by mullions, which would look like aluminum, uh, pieces of aluminum that would hold each glass panel to the, you know, and hold the next one. Or you could caulk them, which is very elegant and it just looks like a glass wall. He did uh, advise that a mechanical engineer would be, would need to be consulted to determine if any adjustments to the HVAC system would be necessary. And I did want to point out that Bryant suggested that this project, if it were ever implemented, would best be carried out in conjunction with a reassessment to determine the optimal internal layout of the Woodland Branch. Can you go to the next page, please? So this is some examples of quiet areas in local libraries that have glass walls to achieve that function of quietness. On the left-hand side, you'll see glass walls and those are glass walls connected with mullions, the aluminum pieces that hold the glass in place. On the other side in Cupertino, those are glass panels connected with caulking. And you can just barely see the line that you know, shows you where the two glass panels are. And so that's a very elegant solution, but either one of them do the trick. Thank you, uh, Mary Jo. So this is the uh, floor plan of the Woodland Library. And this, uh, I hope you can see the entry, the, the, the arrow pointing into the door then there's a left side of the building and then there's a bigger right side of the building. The arrow points to the glass wall where the glass wall would be installed. 
the left side is the adult section at the moment. And it also is the area where all the stacks of books are located. So this wall would be installed at that, at that uh, location. If you'll go to the next slide, please. I wanted to show you that the way the ceiling is, is uh, constructed at Woodland is, um, is unusual. So it's a very high ceilinged building, but in the middle of it is this eight foot high section. And it essentially is like a little hallway with an eight foot ceiling with ceiling tiles, which would be, as it turns out, ideal for the installation of this glass wall. The glass wall would be installed on the left side here, which is shown in this photo on the left side. It would fit exactly along the edge of this white ceiling tile area. It would go from the back door all the way to the front door. And it's interesting because on the other side, which you see on the, on the right, the photo on the right side, uh, there are a lot of um, wires that come down through those pipes for all of the computer wiring and electricity, et cetera, to run uh, all the computers that are, are located there. So it would not interfere with the high ceilings. We wouldn't have to worry about the high ceilings because you could put that wall right there uh, touching the ceiling tiles or right to the uh, side of them and that's where we're proposing this glass wall be installed. Could you go to the next slide, please? Here's just a side view of the proposed glass wall with the location of two doors. One of the doors would be located when you walked into the library right after you walked into the front door. And one door would be located at the rear which would be right before you go into the kind of long little hallway to get to the back patio door. Next slide. So the next steps are what we're doing now, reviewing the project proposal. And then um, if the commission, the entire commission approves the proposal, will submit it to the county and they can then decide whether or not this makes sense for them to consider and then install because it is an internal, it's part of the internal um, library which the county is responsible for. So that's the end of the presentation. Um, commissioners, do you have questions? I think you covered it very well, Freddie. Thank you. Uh, Cindy. Are you gonna take comments from the, um, the residents? Yes, yes. Okay. I'm one of those. Okay. Just let me know when it's time. Okay. Absolutely. Is there any discussion by the um, commission first? Here. I, you know, we've been talking about this for a while uh we should put it to a vote it's well thought out it's not to say that it's going to happen but our expectations are correct is to see if the county finds that it's worthwhile uh, in putting in i think that it's a great proposal and it certainly has my vote uh, and let's hope for the best and that they see the light and uh, move forward with something like this to address the noise Thank you, Pierre. Any other comments? Um, I agree with uh, Pierre. I mean, since I joined the commission, uh, this has been an issue that's been brought up, and I'm sure it preceded us as well. So um, I'm glad to see that we actually have a proposal that has a potential solution that 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 uh, 
could very well take care of this problem, um, hopefully once and for all. And, and the cost is relatively modest. Any other um, commissioner have any other? Okay, so can we have uh, comments from members of the public, please? Cindy? If Cindy, oh, if Cindy, I don't see any other hands. So if Cindy is the only one, um, do you want to do three minutes? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> hey, Cindy, I'll if start your Fill up, fill up three minutes. So if something like this is approved by both the commission and the county, what I'd like to have everybody consider is instead of calling it the adult space and the children's space, uh, to um, consider the type of use that these two spaces are going to have. So don't designate it by age group, but consider calling one side of it the quiet study area and the other part, the quiet collaborative talking area. And then that way it's not an age thing, it's a how are you using the space? How are you using the library? I am making the assumption that the space that would be glassed off if it happens may contain books, but definitely contain tables. And there are students of different ages that may want to use that space. So that's my comment. Thank you, Sandy. Really good point. Really good point. Any other um, members of the public who have comments? There are no hands raised. Thank you, Casey. Okay. Well, shall we put it to a vote? Could I have a motion yeah. to um, approve the uh, Proposal for a sound mitigation wall at the Woodland Branch Library. I move. Okay. Carol. Okay. Is me second? I'll second. Okay. Nelvin second. Nelvin. Okay. Casey, would you do the roll call, please? Yes, I will. Chair Wheeler? Yes. Vice Chair G? Yes. Commissioner Dixit? Yes. Commissioner, Commissioner Carter? Yes. And Commissioner Commissioner Bedard. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Okay. I have that unanimous. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, okay. The next item for consideration, um, you know, and I noticed in the minutes, this was the uh, the ad in the town crier that said that they are conducting a weekly poll again. And I'm not sure if we want to discuss it here or in the in in a subcommittee uh, report, but I was wondering if the commission wanted to take advantage of that poll in the Los Altos town crier to see if there's any question the commission has for the community that they could submit to the town crier. Now the town crier may not choose that question, but it is free and it does go to a large number of the residents of Los Altos. And it might be something, a vehicle for getting some kind of feedback on, on, on an undetermined <laughs> issue or question or something we might want to do but we don't know whether the public wants it or you know there's there's a number of ways that i could think of using this poll and i'm wondering if we're interested in it and it's just a basically i'm just trying to understand from the commission whether you are or are not so can i just kind well, of i thought it might be a, a I thought it might be a good opportunity to see if there's any support for remodeling the main library. We, we tend to assume that there is not, but maybe a poll would show a lot of support. Okay. Well, I mean, can we just talk people about- People I know would support it. So, you know, if we, without going into specific questions, could we just- generally say we are interested in thinking and in, in trying to come up with a 
question that the entire commission would bless um, and maybe also um, get input from our liaison uh, council member, our vice mayor Meadows and the county library to make sure that it's, I mean, I, I, I would not wanna ask a question on support for a new library unless we really kind of vetted it. Uh, I but, agree with that. So with those constraints in mind, would we, oh, and Vice Mayor Meadows has a comment. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Chair Wheeler, I wasn't sure if that was you wanting me to comment or saying that at some point in the future. So I'm I'm willing to comment, but I'm also willing not to. <laughs> oh, if you have any input, please, please do speak up. We'd love to hear from you. Okay. Yeah, I I would have concerns about asking question about the library, you know, remodeling it, whatever. A single question is not going to allow you to do, uh, get at the detail and the scenarios and all the rest of it that you need to do. Um, we also don't know that the town crier polling, and I must admit, I've missed that. I haven't noticed that in, in the town crier lately, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean there it's a statistical projectable survey all that kind of thing. So you can ask a question and whenever you ask a question, you'll get an answer, but this night might not really be the best way to ask a question to get you the information you need to, to drive decision-making. I agree with that. And I, I would be very hesitant okay. to ask a question about the, you know, remodeling the library or building a new library, but, you know, there are other less um, important in actual questions for example like what kind of program or, or would you prefer a this program or a that program or what about if we did if we offered xyz or something there, there may be questions that could be uh, used in that poll that could give just some general guidance as to what people are interested in we may never come up with a question may, that is worth submitting to the town crier, but on the other hand, we're always looking for input. And if we, if, if we have this as one of the tools that we're considering using, then it might play out. Charvery? I was under the, imp I, I was under Carol? the impression that the, that, that the poll uh, is not a statistically uh, pure vehicle. That it's just, uh, uh, you know, a, a community uh, raising of hands, so to speak. And it has to be taken in that light. And I just gave the remodeling suggestion as an, as, you know, I threw, threw that out. And it's probably not a good idea to go full bore for something like that. Exactly. But I think we should consider using the poll. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, before Pierre takes uh, the question, I'm going to ask my question. Uh, I thought that if the Library Commission uh, and the newspaper were joined in uh, figuring out a poll, let's say every issue of the newspaper, then we have an opportunity from the Commission to raise awareness and bring information together. Um, suppose we were to ask, we were to uh, first ask, does the public who reads the newspaper have a question that they would like to ask and submit um, about services in the city or um, the library that they're interested in or having, let's say, or um, questions relating to, uh, do they want to read some more books about a subject? Or, or or see some film on on the uh, in the the city that place where they show a film every summer things like that and they can submit these questions to us and if we find them appropriate we send them to the town crier and they publish that as a poll and then we find out okay how many people are actually attending the farmers market how many people want on puppetry 
how many people want to attend the next book reading session in the library how many people that kind of poll is what i was thinking about but yes that we would be the place where questions would come and we would siphon them and figure out which one to send to the newspaper to run but i don't know if i'm thinking the way everyone else okay. is thinking okay um i'm not sure we could talk about this but you know the the poll is something that the town car put in the newspaper on the front page i think a couple of weeks ago a couple of issues ago and they were saying that they were considering reinstituting this weekly poll and it's something they used to do and they are going to start it back up again and you can submit questions to them but that's the way it would be we would just submit a question we would be one of who knows how many <laughs> people or organizations that would submit a question okay. and then we are not pick, siphoning they are okay they, they pick a question that they want to use for the poll and then I, they publish the results. Pierre? I was going to, I say, this is easy. We do it. And it's very gratuitous. The way these polls work is they'll say, Pierre, what was the name of your first pet? Then they'll have Pierre Los Altos. And I'll tell you that my pet was Peanut. And then they'll have four people who give you the same info. So you could have, you could have them outside the library asking people what's the last book you checked out of the library right it's a visibility thing i don't think it's going to answer anything uh, from a data standpoint but grab it if it's free i was going to argue if it costs something but not at all that's the awareness subcommittee should uh put this to use and all make right. it really light and fluffy so can i just get a thumbs <laughs> thumbs up or thumbs down to just give some okay up Okay, Melvin, are you for thinking about this? You're okay. And uh, Carol, are you up for just thinking about this? Yes. Okay. Um, I should have asked, does any member of the public have a comment on this issue? Sorry. We do not have any members of the public with hands raised. Okay. Oh, I don't know how to raise my hand, but can I speak? I'm Nancy and I'm on a phone connection. I've never done it that way before. Yes, you can. I can, can I start your time. Hand? Absolutely. I'll okay. start your time now. Okay. Okay. I just have a, a quick comment. Um, I don't know that it's a, a bad idea or a good idea, but I guess if, if it were me, since you're a part of our government, I would think that you'd want to ask the city attorney if that's a um, like a fair way to do a poll. And I don't know if anyone has any questions about what I mean by that. You know, because you're only getting like people who subscribe to the the paper. That's all. I just I just think as a, because you're you're not just a resident, you're a, a piece of our government. There might be rules or or something about that. That's all. Okay. Thank you very much, Nancy. We appreciate your input. Um, any other members of the public? Casey? I do not see any at this time. If there's anyone else that wasn't able to raise their hand but would like to speak. Okay. I think that should be it. All right, thank you. The next item for consideration is using next door. Um, This has, um, we've talked about this in the awareness subcommittee and there are um, strong feelings against and strong feelings for. And if there are, I think uh, in just my own personal opinion is if we have enough people with strong feelings against, maybe we should just not consider it. But on the other hand, if we are trying to promote the knowledge of events that are happening, you know, like there's going to be a speaker who's going to speak at such and such time and such and such date, um, you know, our speaking volumes, uh, our distinguished author series, to just put a canned 
statement, everybody would put the same statement on their next door feed. It's free. It's one of, in my opinion, it's one of the best ways to try to communicate with a large number of people. Um, and it would help publicize events is, is what I see it being used for. And I'd love to have this discussion, Pierre. Oh, Pierre, you're mute. I even forgot to unmute. I was so excited about this subject. Uh, you know, I, I am vociferously opposed to next door and, I, and I'll give my reasons and I don't mean to, you know, please don't, I'm not, I'm trying not to sound completely whacked out, but these are, this is my rationale. One, they're, they're a public company. They're motivated by their own rules. They're in it for the money. I'll repeat, they are a public company. They're not like, uh, like us. They're not, as uh, the public speaker uh, noted, someone, you know, from the government. They determine new boundaries. I mean, I've actually tried to publicize things like the FOL sales, uh, anything that made sense, the, you know, and I basically reach out to people in Mountain View and, you know, because I'm on the Mountain View border, Mountain View, Palo Alto, my reach within the people I'm supposed to represent is like almost nil. Uh, any attempt by the city to put out a message on an event seems to be regulated. They're very keen on making sure cities don't get a lot of messaging out. Um, I'm just concerned that they're public, that they've redrawn the boundaries of my city in a way. And I, you know, I'm sensing anyway, those are my I'm I'm opposed okay. for what that's worth. And I have other reasons, but like I said, I I could go on. Thank you. Um, Nelvin, do you have a, an opinion? I really don't. I mean, um, I, I don't use Nextdoor much. Um, I do set up some alerts, but they're primarily around security and pets. So I, I, even if we were to announce something, I'm not sure I would actually see it in my email. Okay. Charvery, do you have an opinion about Nextdoor? I don't like it and I don't use it. <laughs> That's my only opinion. Okay. Uh, Carol, do you have an opinion about Nextdoor? Well, I would not use it for this purpose. I've used it for, uh, to hire a cat sitter, but I wouldn't use it for publicizing things about the library. I dislike the conversations that take place on Nextdoor. There are some people who have nothing to do except be nasty. And uh, I, I, I just wouldn't, I'm very much against doing this. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have any comments from members of the public? I do not see any at this time. Is there anyone who is not able to raise their hand that would like to speak? Oh, it looks like um, Pierre actually still has his hand yeah, raised. I'll get to him as soon as we clear the public. Okay. Um, I, I do not see any. Okay. Pierre, you have more to say? Thank you. I was only going to ask who put this on the agenda? It was on the agenda last month. Was it something from the awareness? I did. No, I did. Okay. Because I wasn't, it said the minutes weren't clear as to how this was disposed of. So I think you. we can I think we can basically conclude that it is now disposed of. <laughs> okay. Um all right. That's all of the items for consideration. Uh we'll go to our community partner updates and the NCLA is first on the agenda. Cindy. Hello everyone. So we did meet um in July, excuse me. And we had quite a full agenda if filled with lots of new information. Um, there was a, a bit of administrative work that was taken care of and I'm not gonna go over that because it, it's administrative. Um, NCLA did talk about 
it look it appears that with the parcel tax, which will end in 2030, um, it appears that we may have as much as $5 million at the end of that uh, parcel tax ending. And that is because we have not had to spend what we would normally spend. Um, and the COVID situation also cut down any of our expenses. So we, and for a number of years, the interest rates were doing really well, you know, what we were building on the capital. So regardless, there is going to be some money at the end of 2030 that we need to decide what to do with. We have not made any decisions, but there were many ideas brought, up, brought about, and I wanna mention some of those to you. And, uh, and again, I just wanna iterate that nothing was decided. One thing is to consider adding additional hours to both Woodland and to the main library. Another one is to give back the money to the taxpayers. Another one is don't go for another uh, bond or um, parcel tax election in 2030, but to use that money and extend out as many years as it, as it would take, and then go for a, a then decide if we need to go for another parcel tax. Um, and then the other one is to use the money to um, for the building. So uh, for part of a remodel. So there was a bit of discussion and there'll be more follow-up on that. Um, and it obviously 5 million is not going to build a whole new library, um, but it, it would be a start. And if we added in what a lolly host holds um, and then also what the friends might be able to contribute. It could be sizable and it could be something that with that size of money that we could go out to the community for either a, um, a, a, a parcel tax or a bond measure, or we could go for the private donations. And then so following on all of that, we did have Nelvin's uh, presentation, which was quite thorough and well-received. I wanna note that obviously Nelvin was at the meeting and so was um, Vice, Vice Chair um, Meadows. So I would appreciate it if there are other things that you could talk about on presentations. Nelville, do you wanna say anything about what your reactions were? Yeah, I mean, um, as you said, the report was well received. However, I sense that there was a general reluctance on the part of NCLA to take a uh, leading the effort towards uh, uh, determining how to best move forward with a uh, uh, you know redeveloped library. Um, there was discussion about whether it ought to be a voter initiative versus. Uh, a, a, a government entity that would take the lead on this, uh, given that a voter initiative only requires perhaps a, a little bit more than a 50% vote versus a two thirds majority in the case of, uh, if, a, if NCLA were to, were to lead this. Um, so there was discussion about that. Um, but overall, I just sense that uh, perhaps uh, NCLA uh, has uh, already spent so much time and effort on it that uh, perhaps they want to take a pause before uh, doing anything more on, on this particular topic. Do you think that's fair, Cindy? Yes, I think definitely for a complete redevelopment, but there might be things that we can do. Um, NCLA would be willing to consider expanding parts of the library that would be more within a, um, a smaller cost um, parameter. Yeah, uh, I understand, but um, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, my sense is that the current library footprint only allows very modest expansion, right? It's not like you can go up. Correct. And it's not like you can go out very far given the orchard. Correct, and we can't go down. We can't create a basement. Um, given the structure of the building. There is, so just to tie everything all together too, um, as I've mentioned a couple of meetings ago, there is a potential donation from a Los Altos Hills couple. Their son is working with 
the city and with the county on possibly expanding out the orchard room and the, um, the children's area, call it uh, patio project, um, so that that whole area could be added into um, the library. So opening up the doors, making it an in inside outside space, it's very similar to what you all have been talking about for Woodland, but that it could happen going towards San Antonio without um, taking away any of the orchard trees that are there. Sally, uh, Vice Mayor, Mayor Meadows, would you like to comment? Thank you. I was just going to add um, both Nelvin and Cindy have done a good job on the summary. I think that you haven't mentioned or I didn't hear mentioned that the next step was the, the discussion, at least the, the library entities pulling together potentially. I think the number we talked about was 12 to $15 million to look at. Well, I don't know if you call it an expansion, but um, an enhancement of the current building, but the next steps were agreed. This was all based on um, Secretary Epstein's assumption that the um, NCLA, that the you know that the current um, monies, the overridge, could be used in the context of the facility, and so that was going to go to NCLA's legal counsel, which is actually Los Altos Hills, um, for an assessment. Um, and I know Pierre's shaking his head and he says, of course, you know, he, he, he's made a statement, but regardless, that was what the direction was to get um, the assessment of the NCLA uh, legal counsel as to whether they supported that interpretation. Thank you. So that's where we are with NCLA. We do have several meetings on the schedule. Um, so I, the next one I think is in September. And if we need to have a meeting, I'm, I'm looking at my calendar now, um, we will let you know. Um, let's be on my other calendar. Anyway, so we, we scheduled out to the first part of the year about every other month just to get them on our books. And if we have to have a meeting, if we need a meeting, it will happen. Do any of the commissioners have questions? Do, does any member of the public have a question? There are none that I see. Thank you, Casey. Okay, then we'll go to the Friends of the Library update. Uh, Janet, thanks for joining us tonight. Okay, hi. Um, yeah, so thank you, Freddie. Good to see you back. Um, yeah, so we did move into our new space in the library last week. Uh, we are still figuring out how to make it work. And it is just thr absolutely thrilling to be there. Um, lots of hard work by a lot of people. Gabe Englander, um, Elaine Dauber, lots of people who brought this together and made it happen. Um, and we, in conjunction with uh, the library allowing us to move in there, we are have approved a budget to help the library purchase pods, which Bryant may talk about, to allow people to work in quiet, in seclusion, both you know, singly and in groups. And you know, we're happy to help the library this way. And also it helps us because you know, there is a open ceiling between the library and our in our space. So this allows for people have more quiet when they're working nearby the Friends Corner. It's called the Friends Corner. Elaine Dauber came up with that suggestion and we all liked it. Um, we are having at Pierre's suggestion, we're having a ribbon cutting ceremony this Tuesday. 
and Elaine has invited a bunch of people. Anybody's welcome to come. It's also our general meeting and there's going to be lunch served afterwards and the ribbon cutting is at 11. Um, let's see. In addition, we have our big book sale this weekend uh, starting tomorrow night, probably around 40,000 or so books. And this will be our first time in the brand new community center. It's a mutually beneficial project for us. We bring attention to the community center and we're allowed to use this beautiful space and uh, really spread out and show our collection of books uh, much more favorably. So, so that's a, that's a, a lot's happened in the last month and, uh, and interesting and exciting to hear you talk about a new library space because we are busy building up funds and we have funds in reserve that many people really want to contribute to the building of a new library. So that's what's motivating us. Wonderful, thank you, Janet. Does any of the commissioners have any questions for Janet? <laughs> okay, does any member of the public have questions for, for Janet? I don't see anything and I don't have anyone written down for this item. Okay, Casey, thank you. So the next update is from uh, Lolly, Cindy. Hello again. So putting on my Lolly hat, um, we have our next meeting this Tuesday at 8 a.m. And we are spending a lot of our time on two big topics. The first one is we are hosting um, a speaker for the Science and Technology Week, which our talk is going to be September 15th at, I believe it's 7 p.m. You all, hopefully you all have received an invitation to the reception. And then the speaker is after that, is going to be held at the community center. So we're really pleased that the city is in partnership with library type activities. This is fantastic. We are borrowing tables from the museum. We're getting all the groups involved. So just wherever we can get the resources. Um, and so the reception is for the donors and for uh, special guests, which the friends and the, um, the library commission are considered that. And we also invited all of the officials from both uh, Los Altos Hills and Los Altos. Um, Dr. Logo, Longo is a professor at Stanford University, and he's going to be speaking on aging and dementia. Um, the second project that we're spending a lot of our time on right now is updating our brand and our website. So they go hand in hand. So we are going to be looking at some of that content on hopefully this Tuesday. And we are driving hard and fast to try to get that up in time for the reception so that we can show it off. And that's my update. And we have Freddie, who's also part of the Lolly group. So Freddie, if there's anything you wanna add, please feel free. Um, I think you did a great job, Cindy, thank you. All right. So any questions from the commissioners? Okay, any questions from members of the public? There are, <clears throat> excuse me, there are currently no hands raised. Thank you, Casey. Okay. Um, so it's now time for our uh, presentation by Jennifer on our uh, the Santa Clara Library District. Good evening, Commissioners. Jennifer Weeks, County Librarian from the Santa Clara County Library District. It's nice to be with you all this evening. I just have a few updates, um, certainly. I know Bryant will give an update there on summer reading as that is quickly coming to a close, but also an opportunity for us to invite people back into the library as school is happening just a few days away. So our um, 
play spaces and toys are coming back to the library. As many of you are, I'm sure, well aware of the benefit of early learning and really the, the inspiration um, that reading uh, time at the library does for families. 90% of a child's brain is developed by the time they're five years old, and we get to see a lot of those little learners. So we have new play panels that are going to be installed at all of our libraries, and we're excited about inviting families back into the library to play. Additionally, every single student in the county um, library district area has a library card, a student e-account. So we do have a student portal and lots of wonderful digital resources that these digital learners have learned to use so very, very well over the last few years. And we continue to be engaged with our school districts to make sure that um, all youth have that library access. The other highlight I wanted to talk to you about was our community resource specialist. So this is a program working in partnership with the California State Library. The community resource um, specialist is working out of our Milpitas Library and with our bookmobile services down in Gilroy. But the real benefit is he is bringing his expertise to the district about what social services are available in our county, in our cities, and connecting people to those that they need most. So he's helping our staff learn about that. He's meeting with patrons where they are. And we're really looking at the opportunity of making those important connections for people right when they need them through the library and encouraging our staff to learn more too. So that's my quick update and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Jennifer. Commissioners, do you have questions? No. Any member of the public? Okay, thank you. So Bryant, would you give us our re the report on the Woodland and um, main libraries? Absolutely. Good evening, everyone. This is Bryant speaking for those who can't see me. Let me pull up my screen here. Oh, I'm sure I'm sharing properly. Looks like... I chose a plane because everyone seems to be going on vacation. <laughs> uh, so the Los Altos Wilton Branch Library, August 2022 report. I'll start with our numbers as usual. Uh, in June, items checked out from Los Altos Library, we saw a bit of a bump, 46,824 items, 8,252 at Woodland Branch. Coming back in, we again see that same bump, 44,494 um, in Los Altos, Maine, and 9,614 at Wilton Branch. Patrons who took advantage of our online resources who had a Los Altos Library uh, home library card, 9,476, and uh, Woodland had 1,646 patrons uh, take advantage of the online resources. And of course, the in-person folks who came in to visit us in our buildings, 8,812 in June uh, for Los Altos and 1,896 at Woodland Branch. Highlighting some of the programs that are taking place uh, in the month of August for adults and teens on Monday, August 8th at 7 p.m. We do have the Los Altos Bob and Wrangler Sewing Club, and uh, that's a program run by one of our uh, librarians who will be walking people through a project. And we've already seen quite a few people interested in coming in to see this kind of the restart of this group. So for anyone who's into sewing or want to uh, pick it up, it is a very fun group to join. Uh, Tuesday, August 23rd at 7 p.m., we have a uh, book group that we took over actually from Cupertino, uh, but it's called Bookshare. What are you reading? And it's uh, not, not, not a traditional book group in the sense that folks pick a you know, title we all read and come in and talk about it, but people actually join and uh, talk about the books they've been reading, actually do the book recommendations that way. And, it's, and I've had the uh, pleasure of running the group once uh, before heading it off to uh, one of my colleagues. And it was a very fun group, very enthusiastic, very energetic energetic and all all great uh, readers who just tear through titles and have a number of suggestions to give out to the group. And uh, for the teens, Wednesday, August 24th at 5 p.m., I believe uh, we do have a virtual program, college prep workshop, extracurricular activities, getting them ready for uh, applying for college. Over on the kids' side, on Tuesdays at 10.30, we are bringing the uh, story times back 
into Los Altos. I must have accidentally deleted something while I was messing around with it. I apologize. That first one there is about story times. So they are uh, kind of traveling back indoors in uh, Los Altos. Saturday, August 27th at uh, 2.30, we have the Furry Friends Reading Buddies program. Again, very popular these past few months. So we're going to continue that, get our reluctant readers started by um, handing them over to uh, cute little animals like the one you see there in the hopes that it'll encourage them to pick up those books and start reading. And uh, at Woodland Branch, Sunday, August 14th at 11.30, we do have an outdoor story time thanks to our uh, librarian, Tatooi. Uh, some photos from outreach that we did in um, July. I'm starting to get my months mixed up. Lots of fun out with the Go Go Biblio. We were also at the Apricot STEM Fair over at the Los Altos History Museum. Lots of things going around on the campus, and uh, it, it was fantastic visiting um, uh, what uh, our other kind of neighbors were doing and being able to help them uh, kind of bolster the, the, the events that they're doing. Uh, uh, for the month of August, we do have um, the Los Altos Chinese School visit planned for August 5th. Uh, the farmer's market run on August 11th and 25th, and we are participating in the family fun day uh, being experimented with at the community center. So those are the outreach uh, that we have planned so far. Kind of a listed summary of stuff that's been happening and going on in the library. Rose Biza will be officially returning August 10th. So sadly, this is my last time presenting to this group and working with all of you, but I'm sure there will be still many opportunities for me to collaborate and kind of figure out how we can make libraries a better place. Um, summer prize, uh, Summer Reading Prize Pickup has begun and it runs through the month of uh, August. It is uh, not too late to finish up your readings if you haven't uh, done so yet, claim your prize. And especially for adults, this year we have a $5 gift certificate that the friends of the library have graciously agreed to give us so our finishers and uh, they can take advantage of that at the major book sales, both uh, this weekend and the one in November. Uh, well, we've already heard the Friends of the Library are having their ribbon cutting ceremony on August 9th at 11 a.m. So I hope to see some of you there, uh, but I will definitely be there uh, to uh, wel welcome the group and see kind of the tours that they'll be running of the new space. Um, the city of Los Altos will be helping with the installation of the outdoor return bins at Los Altos and Woodland Branch Library. So I, I believe this was also another uh, kind of library commission initiated idea of proposal that went through that got the thumbs up. And again, uh, what you guys do, you can see the impact where we're taking we're taking into consideration what could work and making it happen. So we really do appreciate uh, the work that you all do. So uh, I'm told August 9th is when they will begin the installation here at Los Altos. And once they're done with the project here, they will move to Woodland, uh, although no set date on that yet. We are still awaiting the arrival of the uh, uh, the shelving and furniture for the new magazine and newspaper area that the friends kind of moved out of in the corral space next to the uh, city hall entrance. Uh, but as soon as the uh, shelving is available, we are definitely going to knock those walls down and uh, make this space available to the public because I think it's a fantastic spot. People will be able to uh, sit there, uh, you know, read in leisure and, of course, observe the art wall and, of course, take advantage of the window out of the orchard as well. So I think it's going to be a very popular spot when it's open. Uh, and this is something I haven't brought up in a, in a while. So some of you may even be scratching your head. Is what is that again? Uh, open Plus at Woodland is still chugging along the installation of the necessary equipment is scheduled to happen in August given kind of the uh you know the, the, the delays that we've been seeing with a lot of shipments uh, but, um, we can't make any promises on when things will be ready to go but it is it is moving along and we are already kind of dealing with the internal structures necessary to make this happen so we're all very excited to see uh wh when we'll finally be able to get open plus going at Woodland. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can actually see folks and any questions for me that I can try to answer. I always say try because I'm not confident I have them, <laughs> but that's why Jennifer's here. Uh, Pierre? Of course, I can't resist. Uh, but thanks, Bryant, for everything. I mean, you look at everything on your uh, sheet and everything that's been done, you know, from the Friends Corner to the bins to everything. So good luck. And thank you. Who's Rose? Anybody <laughs> remember Rose? She's an amazing librarian who you will love very much when she goes back. You'll thanks, be asking Bryant, who because is... you said so. <laughs> yeah, you'll be like, who's Bryant in a couple of months? <laughs> No, Brian, you're right. P 
Pierre, absolutely. We thank you so much. You've done so always. This is the second time you've um, set in for Rose and you are amazing, do a fabulous job. And you know, we love working with you. So we'll miss you, but you're, we're not gonna really miss you because we'll continue to see you and work with you. That's so. totally fun around. I really do appreciate hearing that. I, I, I didn't imagine it would be happening again and in, in the pandemic again. I was like, oh, it's still the pandemic and I'm still, okay. <laughs> Brian, it's actually, I only subbed in for one library commission meeting before, and it happened to be right as you came on for Rose. So for me, my whole experience is you. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's, it's funny. We've had, uh, we, we, I've had one colleague who kind of came and left during the pandemic when everyone was masked up and I've never seen him without his mask on. So if I ran into him out on the street, I might not recognize him. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Brian. Much, much, much appreciated always. Okay, so we shall now move to uh, the city staff update. Mary Jo? Yeah, I just have a few updates um, from the city. On a uh, recreation side, we are in the last week of summer camp. Our staff is very happy about that. Um, we had a great summer. Um, we had sort of reduced camps this year, um, but we did have a full slate of our Redwood Grove camps, and um, they're very excited um, to, for tomorrow to be the last day. Um, but so we're moving into the fall. Um, fall registration for camps and classes is coming up very quickly, um, and our, uh, our fall um, Tiny Tots programs are um, all getting ready to, uh, to get started as well. Um, one big thing coming up is that we are doing a end of summer concert uh, in on the Hillview soccer field. It's on August 25th. Um, it is from six to 8 p.m. and the band is Neon Velvet. I understand they're kind of a fun cross um, decade cover band, I think like 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, and so it's a free concert. Uh, it'll be really fun. Uh, Bryant can just step outside of work and be there. Um, so we hope everybody will come out and enjoy it. Um, and uh, as Bryant mentioned, our family fun days, we did our first one in July and, and we're very excited about these. The library um, participated and we are being co-sponsored by the Friends of the Library. Um, and we had a great event. Um, I, we had over 200 people um, come through the community center that day. I know the library, um, they were in a room that was a little bit further away from center and they, they counted a, a little over a hundred in their room. And, um, it, we had crafts and uh, movies going on and games. And so we're, um, we have two more that we've advertised for September and October. I mean, sorry, August and September. Um, so August 20th and September 24th, and they all have different themes. Um, and uh, the families seem to really, really enjoy it. So we have now um, gotten the go-ahead to continue to do these through the end of the year. So we'll be doing one on October 22nd, uh, November 19th, and December 10th. So um, it's a great way for us to bring families to the community center on the weekends uh, because we have um, only been open during the weekdays uh, to the public up to now. We've been open basically Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So that is a time that a lot of families can't uh, come out and check out the community center. So uh, this is a great opportunity for us to bring a lot more of the community into the center to see the beautiful space and provide some fun activities for them to do on a Saturday. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention is if in case you didn't know, um, on August 1st, uh, our new chief of police started. Um, Chief Aviat um, and a Aviat, forgive me if I pronounced it wrong, but um, she um, officially started on the first. Um, she was previously the deputy chief of the BART police. Uh, and we're just really excited. We had a little um, ice cream social with her um, and everybody got a chance to meet her and talk to her. And we're really excited um, about having her 
in the city. So that's all for me. Thank you, Mary Jo. Any questions for the commission from the commissioners? Any questions from members of the public? Okay, um, we will now go to city, uh, I'm sorry, to subcommittee reports. Um, the first one is the awareness subcommittee. I have to find my notes, sorry. There we go, sorry. Um, the, sub, the subcommittee um, met on uh, July 27th and we discussed topics for upcoming months for the Lolly ad. Um, we, uh, were, we postponed the in-person tutoring ad because it wasn't yet mentioned on the district's website and Bryant believes it will actually start in September. So if that's the case, we'll advertise for that next month. Um, we are going to see next Wednesday how the new InDesign software that, that Bryant has is going to work for the Lolly ad. Uh, I've seen the proof and it looks great. It should have really good colors, a white background. And so we're very excited that that's going to solve the, the color fidelity and grayness issues that we've had with the ad. Uh, also, just uh, to let you know, Bryant provided an update on the pods because that was one of the um, resources that we wanted to feature in an ad. And um, there were some ad additional uh, specifications that were required for fire safety and ADA compliance. And Brian's been working with the city and the fire department to resolve those. So um, as soon as those specifications are provided and formal drawings, then the vendor will estimate that once the, he receives the order, it'll be 18 to 20 weeks for delivery. So we look forward to those pods. I think it'll be a great resource uh, and we'll advertise them when they're available. Um, that's everything from the awareness subcommittee. Any questions? Uh, Pierre. Sorry. Uh, what caught my eye, and I did address this with Bryant separately offline, but why is he using InDesign? I mean, to do an ad, it's insane. I mean, from my what I know about publishing, this is like using uh, uh, a huge, you know, a cannon for essentially a printing problem, which, by the way, in my opinion, uh, granted, I may be an amateur here, but this is a town crier's problem. I mean, why why offload this to the librarian? That's my question. It's crazy. That's when I read this, I thought it was way above and beyond. But you know what? I may be wrong, Chairman. You wrong. Thank you. You are wrong. We've had a number of meetings with the town crier. They have been extraordinarily gracious to explain what the problems are. Uh, I, I have met separately with people who have incredible experience with Adobe. And um, it is a problem of color conversion. The license has been made available to Brian by Jennifer. And we believe this is gonna solve the problem. So uh, respectfully, Pierre, there are a number of experts who believe that this is how the problem is to be solved. So, yes. Well, respectfully, I'd like to talk to them because respectfully, PDF is a way that you do color conversion on the fly and the ability for Bryant and, you know, we need to hear from Bryant, but the ability for Bryant to manipulate color in a PDF conversion would be a lot less of a sledgehammer than in design. My opinion only, but hey. Brian, do you want to weigh in at all or, or perhaps Pierre, you could speak to the 
production and and graphics people at the town crier i'm sure they'd be happy to speak with you <laughs> i'd i'd love to if that helped the situation at all and you know what they may be absolutely right but it just seemed like rather a sledgehammer solution to have our uh, community librarian uh, deal with InDesign, which is, you know, a fairly hardcore tool, in my estimation. Okay, Brian, do you want to comment at all? Well, yeah, the, the library is always happy to try. That's, <laughs> that's our thing. So, you know, I sat in those meetings, and they told us that that was a possible solution. And, you know, I, I felt it was, uh, it was, it was within the realm of uh, for us to achieve. So again, I didn't make any promises that going forward, this may be the best solution, just that we were going to try and see if this would solve our problem. And of course, ultimately, of course, I didn't want to make any final statements, because Rose will be the one who will inherit this. Uh, and I've been experimenting with it in the hopes that I could pick it up quickly and kind of pass it along to Rose so that she doesn't have a huge learning curve when she comes back. So it's kind of a we'll, we'll see moment. But uh, my biggest concern, of course, is whether we're doing it correctly, because, you know, they gave us the specs. We're working on it, trying to figure it out. And we'll we'll find out over the next few ads whether, uh, you know, the adjust whether the adjustments I've made are correct and kind of fixes the coloring problem that we see. And uh, We'll see from there kind of what the if there's a better solution or if this is the one that works for us. Thank you. Let's move to the infrastructure subcommittee report. Um, so Nelvin is working on the uh, partition wall for the orchard room. The proposal will be ready in the in the future. <laughs> um, and uh, will be submitted to the to the commission. Um, the other thing that we discussed was just collaborating with the Public Arts Commission on this picnic area, which we've already discussed. Our next meeting will be um, I think it's October I'm sorry, August, uh, I think, 24th. Any questions? Okay. Um, Nelvin, do you have a report for the Futures Subcommittee? Um, I'm not on the Futures Subcommittee oh, at this time. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. And uh, we covered the report out that we did uh to ncla in a previous uh segment okay thank you sorry about that i keep forgetting that sorry uh pierre do you have a report for services? sure uh well to add to julie commissioner crane's not here but she's going to be very happy with the progress on open plus and uh, to see that for sure um <clears throat> it's been a tough month we've had uh separate problems getting the subcommittee together but we've been touching, I touch base with Kim Mosley uh, and uh, looking at possible partnerships uh, and ways to get services uh, through existing areas. We also talked about the welcome wagon. Is there such a thing? I know Mary Jo sent me mail today about an organization that uh, deals with new people. Um, and uh, Basically, in general, uh, I had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Kim. We're going to regroup again uh, next month as part of the subcommittee meeting and uh, see what we can do. But I think there's great possibilities in uh, working with the chamber, both in outreach, but also, you know, with people coming in new to the community, um, and but also outreach with new projects and uh, with, uh, you know, folks in the commercial areas. So. I'm pretty excited about this. I think it uh, will we'll do good things. Great, thank you. Any questions from the commissioners? Any questions from members of the public? No, okay, great. Okay, so uh, at this point, we have uh, the opportunity to request future agenda items. Does anybody? have anything they'd like to put on the agenda at the next meeting? Uh, Pierre. I would like further discussion about uh, the Poet Laureate issue. 
uh, and, and and actually to see a proposal, hopefully, as to what the uh, that commission is planning, the arts commission is actually planning. Okay, if possible. Uh, okay, That's, I'll yeah, if possible. How about we put this as a future agenda item uh, to be determined time wise based on the what the public arts commission is is uh, ready to discuss with us okay well my only comment has been on the on our agenda twice and in no case was there a proposal for it it was just they're, sort of they're still very much in the preliminary stages of okay talking about this so if i uh i mean i'll keep in contact with them and when they're when they have anything solidified enough to discuss it as a proposal, then I'll ask them to come and speak. But to this us. has okay. this Does very that... much has possibilities. I mean, in terms of setting up uh, a yearly type of event, I mean, it this can really you know this can be a really big thing for Los Altos. It, it it's, be, it's, it's I see it positive. Politicized. <laughs> well, you know what? I was just I hate to be so negative there, but I, I've seen it happen. That's all. All right. Well, good. I'm glad you see your you're uh, positive about it. Um, so oh, yeah. yeah, done right. This is good. Okay, good. All right. Anything else? Anybody else have a future agenda item? All right. It's 816. We can adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye.